All right, today, special guest, we have Zane Navratil, and he's gonna talk about the two-handed, the two-handed shots uh, from the kitchen line and why you would use one hand versus two hands and some advantages for both. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've been inspired by your videos for, for a long time, so I'm stoked to finally be here, and we're gonna talk about, yeah, when to use the two-hander, if you should use the two-hander, so let's get after it. All right, let's go. When I'm in quick hands exchanges, I'm generally gonna be prepared with two hands, and my first inclination is to go with that two-handed volley. For me, I find that I have a little bit more stability because my left hand is behind the paddle, but also, I have a little bit more maneuverability. Imagine I'm holding something that's very long. If I'm holding it all the way at the end here, it's gonna be more difficult to move around. Whereas if I'm holding it further up on this paddle, I have more maneuverability and a little bit quicker hands. But obviously, we know it's really tough if this ball comes right at our body to still hit with two hands. So at that point, I'm going to slide my hand off and go one. So good drill that, that we're gonna do right now is, is just go and do a quick hands drill. We're both gonna be focusing on hitting cross court to each other's backhands in the hands exchange. And naturally, some of those shots are going to come over a little bit more towards our body and we'll adjust and hit those one-handers. Let's do it. Here we go. Ooh. Hey. Hey. Oh, that thing's coming off that thing, dude. You know what? That's really good, dude. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I've been trying to uh, add the two-hander on. I haven't gotten to that point yet where I'm here and then I'm sliding here. Yeah, I think like... that's one of the harder parts about this two-hander is, is just getting the feel for okay, at what point am I still able to come in here with two versus what point do I need to take the one hand off? And I yeah. think just this cross court hands drill where you have that little bit of natural variation is, is really good for finding that spot for you. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. So uh, in, in your opinion or when you're playing, there's also, instead of just coming off with your left hand, you could also slide to your left and also counter there. So when do you when do you decide that? Sure. I think I think for me, leaning and and taking that uh, two hander is option number one. But hmm. we all know like sometimes the ball just comes at us too Got quickly. It. Yeah. It's it's faster for me to just go to one hand than it is to either move or really lean and get out of the way. Um, basically, I'm using this one hander when I can't hit a two hander. Yeah. Got comfortably. It. Got it. So like it's a time thing. So it may be on slower balls that you're attacking or something like that. And you can read it earlier. You may have time to slide. And if you don't, then you'll just let the hand go. Yeah, I'd say that's a fair. That's a good um, summary there. Yeah. OK, so cool. are you a tournament or competitive player? Would you like to vastly improve your game? If the answer to these questions are both yes, then you should highly consider joining one of our five-day VIP intensive trainings. This exclusive training will include over 25 hours of elite pickleball coaching, a personalized written action plan, and also an in-house round robin tournament specifically designed for you to play your best pickleball in pressure situations. Not only will you receive top tier level coaching, but the student to coach ratio is six to one, which means the time that I, myself, and another elite coach can spend with you is second to none. If you're interested, make sure you click on the link in the description below. And now let's get right back to the video. Do you wanna do a couple more of these, yeah. these backhands? Let's do a couple. All right, go for it. Eh. Ah, oh, nice. My bad. No, that's good. Eh, 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 eh. Eh. Good. Oh, I actually see that. Actually, I haven't practiced it, but yeah, it's actually not that hard to to just take it off. So like. Yeah, no, I, I haven't practiced that, so that's pretty good. It's it's not as hard as you would think, like just sliding the hand off in this spot. Yeah, but take some some reps for sure. So um, no, really good, really good, Zane. So so that's when you know you talked about control and maneuverability and also more power with your left. So when would you use 
like on purpose, strategically, when would you use one-handed uh, volleys? Yeah. Of two? So like generally I'm using a two-hander if I can set that up. The time where it's not adva advantageous to do so would be reach, right? Yeah. Whether that's on a dink or whether that's on a ball that's far out wide over there. If I'm looking to make a contact with two hands, my contact point is gonna be probably within six inches of my body. Whereas if I can take this other hand off, I can reach so much better with, with one hand in here. So when I'm taking dink follies or, or shots that I'm going to attack out of the air, I am, I'm generally taking that, that other hand off just because I can't reach nearly as far with those two hands. Okay. So drill I like to do here for this one is just dinking straight ahead. If I'm taking the ball out of the air, I'm gonna go get it with one hand. If the ball has to bounce, I'm gonna hit it with two hands. Okay, all right, here we go. So I'll give you some short ones and some long ones. Yeah, there's... Here we go. I like that. You're you're putting a little bit of topspin on that uh that uh, backhand one-handed thing. I like that, dude. Yeah, there's just just a little bit of topspin, but I'm not going crazy with it. It's it's difficult to do, and I don't know if I'd recommend it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, dude. Oh. The nice part is too, like if I'm ready in two hands here, and there's a speed up, I'm ready. If it's a dink, I have time to go get it. Yeah. And if I can't reach it. Again, I then have time to sort of take a little bit of a drop step and put that second hand on there. So if I'm prepared here in a two-handed ready position, which you know, maybe that's not the, the, the right thing for everybody, but I feel like I can hit any shot that I need. I can take the hand off, I can keep it on for, for hand speed stuff, yeah. or I can step back and hit a dink. Yeah, no, so. really good, really good. Okay, couple more here. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. I should have killed you with that one. Hey. <laughs> Can you edit that to make it in? So that's two and one. Did you want to mm -hmm. show some where you're actually? Sure. Yeah, I can demonstrate a couple. Uh, Jordan, I'm sure you have great videos on how to how to hit that that uh, one-handed flick attack. Um, but you know, we we do still have the option here when we're reaching in. We can either dink it or we can really go after that that attack. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do a couple. I'll, I'll dink okay. some, and then you reach in, and then we do your flick here. Good. Yeah. Good ball. Ah. Oh, good. Nice shot. So what would you say your um, technique on that is? Because I think you, have, you might have some different ones, but on, on even that one that you caught me on the, the dominant side here, what would you say? Or how, how would you teach people that shot? Uh, that's a, uh, I'd say that's a pretty involved shot, and that's a, that's a loaded question. That might be a, a, uh, a whole video in and of itself. Um, but it really depends on the target that you're hitting. What you noticed is if I'm trying to go over to, to your forehand side yeah. here, I really need to sort of like get on the inside of that ball. Yeah. Whereas if I'm trying to go at you or this way, I'm sort of lining my paddle up on the outside of the ball. Yeah. And obviously trying to hide this as much as I can in, in yeah. real time. Um, I'd say if I did have a one liner of advice here, it is to walk before you can run. Focus on, I would say if you're developing this shot, focus on brushing yeah. without using the wrist before you start to add some of this wrist flick in. Yeah, so maybe just uh, raising, raising your shoulder Mm -hmm. or elbow a little bit maybe. Yeah, without without doing, once you get really comfortable with that and you've got the timing down, then you yeah. can start to gradually add a little bit more and a little bit more wrist to that shot. Yeah, really good. 
So okay. I would say the last time, and this is what I'm most passionate about here, that you really want to be using a two-handed backhand is in the in the dinking. So when I am dinking, if anybody ever sees me play a match and I'm hitting like this, it is going to be a dink, right? Everybody knows it. You know it. I know it. Everybody knows it. It's going to be a dink. We don't ever want our opponents to know exactly what we're going to do. If you see me like this, you might have a pretty good guess of what I'm going to do, but you never know for sure. Yeah. So I want to be unpredictable. I don't want you to know what I'm going to do. From this spot here, I can dink it, and I can also pull it and attack it. Um, and additionally, we dinking with topspin, I think, is slightly more difficult to, to execute, but I think it is pretty important to start getting used to um, because we can put a tiny little bit more pace and the ball is going to drop out of being attackable for our opponent if we do have that little bit of topspin. Yeah. So let's try this, Zane. Let's do a, a couple. I'll feed you three balls and you try to make them look the same. You said the biggest key thing here was deception, right? And that, that's one of the reasons why in my game I'm working on the two-hander more, especially on dinks and also speed ups. But I'll feed you three balls and how about you You go topspin dink on one and then you go on the other two, you can speed up or, doing, or do something else. And maybe we'll slow-mo it and see you know, if there's a tell, yeah, if there's a tell. Oh boy, okay. don't don't tag any other pro pickleball players in it though. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Same ball here. Good ball. Two more. Ooh, that was a good spot. Countered. That was a good spot. Nice okay. done. So really good. Uh, we'll slow mo that and we'll check it out and maybe play a little guessing game. But uh, for the speed up, just in general, Zane one of the shots that I've been working on two-hander, where, do you, where does that power come from? Um, what hand? And just show me a little bit of that, that technique and how maybe you pull it line and maybe when you, you pull it middle, a little across your body. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, I think if players have come from a tennis background, most of them know that, that the power and the stability is mostly coming from this left hand here. In fact, when I was playing tennis, yeah. I, I would drill a little bit just hitting lefty forehands. I actually do that on the pickleball court too. Like I'll drill backhand cross courts hitting with just my left hand because that's the, the main motion. Your right hand here is mostly for stability. Um, so if I'm going to different targets, I'm just going to, I'm going to accelerate. That's the main thing. Closing up the paddle face here. This is obviously a pretty big exaggeration, yeah. but um, being able to drop the paddle below the level of the ball and brush up is huge on this shot. Yeah, so here, let's do a couple. I just wanna kinda see your technique here. We'll go down the line. Sure. Here we go. Good ball, Ken. Good, Ken. Good, okay. So a lot of left hand, and again, your follow through isn't isn't huge, but there there is some follow through. You're probably ending somewhere around here. Yeah, I mean, you still want to be ready to to counter the next one. I can't go crazy with it. Yeah. But um, I think the I think the biggest advantage here is with that left hand maneuverability, I can pull that ball cross court pretty well. Yeah. Uh, it just gives me more options to attack. I can go short cross court. I can go at the person. I can go through the middle, I can go at you, or I can go to the side, all with pretty similar preparation here. Yeah, okay, really good. So this is what we'll do. Um, just for, to kind of show all the different shots, me and Zane are gonna play a couple points out, and I'm gonna dink everything to his backhand, and, uh -oh. he's, and he's gonna utilize um, all, probably all four different shots that we talked about. So the two, the, the one-handed kind of flick volley, and then the two-handed counter. I'm sure he's gonna do that one. Uh, off the bounce, speed up with two hands, and then also the top spin dink. So that's the goal. No Ernie's here. All right. <laughs> All right, Zane. I'm gonna I'm gonna pin it to your backhand, and okay. then uh, maybe we we have a variety of shots, and we'll go we'll go to five points. All right, deal. All right. Winner buys uh, Indian Indian buys, dinner. Buys Indian. You've buffet. been talking about that. All right, here we go. 
Zero, zero. <laughs> <laughs> you said Ernie's, right? I said no, Ernie's. <laughs> it's one zero. Right. No, seriously, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Missed them. Okay, here we go. Zero, zero. Here we go. Now I'm scared you're going to earn it. <laughs> ah, zero nice one. Nice point. Zero one. Here you go. Good uh -oh. ball. That pops been ding. Oh, two. Both lines. Oh, oh three. Oh three. All right, Zane. Here you go. Softball here. <laughs> eh. Oh, oh no. One three. That's what I wanted. One three. Here we go. Ah, now it'll work on my rolls. All right, one four. Oh, Ow. Oh, oh my goodness. Two four. He's so lucky. He's so lucky. Here we go. I was just gonna keep speeding up everything for the rest of that, that point. Oh man. Okay, so I think we had a good variety there. But uh, any final thoughts, Zane? Um, and again, I talk about the two-hander as a weapon in so many of my videos. And when I teach more and more, I'm teaching you more and more. So any last thoughts? The players of today might not be exactly what the players of tomorrow look like, but I think that generally, if we can use those two-handers in some of those quick exchanges, as well as the off of the bounce to conceal some of those attacks. Yeah. That's gonna be good. And we can still have those reach shots with our one-hander. The, the players of tomorrow, I think are gonna have a combination of both. There's not gonna be anybody who's just using one or just using two down the road. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, so, so certain situations, obviously, you're gonna find yourself in. There's pros and cons to both. Um, and Zane did a good job explaining it. Um, yeah, thanks Zane for being on the channel and uh, make sure you go check them out. I'm sure we'll do more content in the future. See you in the next video.